What up YouTube? It's your boy Mr. Ocelot back again with another at-home product review. Today we're looking at the Hyper E-Ride 29er mountain bike. It's an electric mountain bike that's $600 from Walmart. Yeah, let me see that one more time, y'all. It's $600 for an electric mountain bike from Walmart. <laughs> is this gonna be a toy? Very possibly. Or is it gonna be a legit mountain bike? Probably not, unless you uh, replace a whole bunch of components. But I might do that. And by the end of it, I'm hoping to have an $1,800 uh, entry-level mountain bike for the actual mountain, like one of these. So this is uh, the entry-level mountain bike at my local bike shop, San Diego Fly Rides. Shout out to those guys, what up, Patrick? Um, Patrick's the sales guy who hooked me up in April of 2021. Uh, you might remember if you're a biker, that was a very, very difficult time to get a mountain bike of any kind. Um, but yeah, they had this in stock. Uh, I actually went to there to get a specialized Levo Turbo, I think it was. Um, but all they had was for specialized was starting at 10K, which was too much money for me. So I uh, ended up getting this Cube Stereo Hybrid for six grand and I couldn't be happier with it. Um, it got me into mountain biking in places where I never would have dared to go before. So I got a pretty high baseline with the entry level bike shop bike. And we'll see how this Hyper E ride compares. Is it shabby chic or is it trailer trash? Let's find out. And Mochi the Poodle is going to help me build this bike as well. Why are you so excited? <laughs> I've got some real concerns about how can a $600 electric bike be anything other than just a toy? I know it's got a smaller battery. I can accept that on a lightweight bike um, that maybe is going on less um, strenuous trails. But <laughs> is the frame gonna hold up? Um, the components I know are trash, but is this design of bike, you know, with the rear hub motor, is that gonna hold up? Um, does that really throw off the weight distribution? The battery, is it going to hold the charge and continue to hold charge after a few rides? We'll see. I'll be ecstatic if the frame, wheels, motor, and battery are worth keeping on this guy. Because $600 is a lot less than you'd get buying those parts on their own. Shoot, $600 is cheap for an entry-level pair of mountain biking wheels much less the frame, motor, and battery. Are you kidding me? My expectations are super low on this bike, you guys. I mean, it's $598 for Christ's sake. $598, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's more than like a power wheel. <laughs> I mean, is this gonna be one-tenth as good as my Cube Stereo Hybrid? Um, yeah, I'm not even sure about that, but we're gonna find out. So that's this first video. And then if it is any good, what if I soup it up with you know, the contact points, the drivetrain, the bars, the tires, a fork. Is that going to make it into a decent trail bike for green and blue trails only? Um, you know, maybe like an entry below 6K, which is kind of an outrageous price. You know, honestly, for $600, I'll probably just be keeping this as my backup bike. Something I can bring to the taco shop or the gym or as a backup for when the cube's in the shop. $600? Yeah, I'm keeping this. Unless it's worse than a power wheel. <laughs> all right guys, so far all I've done is pull the bike out of the box. It all came out in one piece like this. Um, it's looking really good so far, packaged pretty smartly. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's broken or warped or anything. Feel the boost. That's what I'm hoping to do here. Um, ooh. Okay, so that's interesting. So it says the wheel size is 29 inches, which is what I uh, uh, I knew about. And then it says rider height six foot and up. So that's really good to know. Um, many, many people will not fit this larger frame and wheel size because it's a 29er. So if you're smaller, I would refer you to an even cheaper bike, the Hyper E-Ride 26 inch 
um, wheel bike, which is $398, so $200 cheaper than this. Uh, it does not come with disc brakes, but it does come with the posts for disc brakes in the back. And then if you replace the fork, you can get posts for disc brakes in the front too. So it's definitely also an upgrade candidate. Uh, otherwise, it's pretty similar. Smaller frame, obviously. Smaller bars, I think I heard. Um, but still a slam and deal. $398. I mean, that's arguably even better than this. So if you're below six foot, get that one. Um, I am really happy to see that the pedals are made of alloy and they're pretty nice. I mean, they have the cheesy reflectors on them, but they're usable. One of the big questions I had about this build is, what about these wheels? You know, um, the slightly more expensive Schwinn Electric Boundary, which is also sold by Walmart, advertises itself as being more mountain bike serious um, because it has double walled wheels. Are these walls double walled? Well, in fact, it turns out upon inspection, not only are they double walled, uh, which I can tell by just feeling the width between the inside of the wheel and the outside, um, it looks to be come taped with a rim tape. So that's nice. Well, this is pretty interesting. I'm reading the manual and it's telling me uh, attach the front wheel with a quick release. It shows pictures of a quick release. Quick release there, test the quick release. <laughs> Guys, this comes with a bolt-on wheel. What are you talking about, Hyper? <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, I know there's a supply chain sort of shortage and everything, but um, yeah, just something to be aware of, guys. So here's the saddle, and just like Kev Central said, this is a pretty decent looking and feeling saddle. Um, I've bought saddles like this off of Amazon for 30, 35 bucks. You know, the no-name Chinese stuff. But um, this is kind of comparable to that. It's not the softest gel, but it is gel. Here's a little detail that other YouTube reviewers have pointed out, and that's that the saddle brand is Snafu. What is Snafu, might you ask? Well, I believe the Webster's definition of Snafu is situation normal, all messed up. Of course, I did see that one reviewer actually broke the saddle frame here, which that's actually happened to me with the um, the Amazon saddle that I had. So it's kind of comparable to that. It's like a $30 Amazon saddle. The seat post, um, it's your standard. Is that alloy or is it steel? It feels like, it feels, oh no, that's alloy. That's alloy. Okay. So good for the weight savings and um, decent seat post too. All right. Well, as I'm unboxing this thing, I'm finding a couple of things that are not perfect. Um, this sticker on the crank arms, I'm not sure what happened there. I guess maybe from packaging. The uh, direction to screw your pedals in recommendation that got kind of tore up and smeared on the crank arm. And then this is the sticker that goes on the lock for the battery, telling you which way to turn the key. And it's just not a very good quality sticker. It's kind of delaminating and coming off already. So on day one, mm, maybe not a great choice of sticker there. They probably saved some pennies on this by doing it in English in America and French in Canada and France and Chinese in China, but they should have spent the extra money on a better sticker. Here's a comparison of the Hyper's battery alongside my Cube Stereo Hybrid's battery. So the Cube is a Bosch Power Tube 625. I presume that means 625 watt hours capacity in there. Whereas uh, by my calculations, the Hyper has a little over 280 watt hours in its battery. The Hyper's battery is about 14, 14 inches long. The Bosch is about 18 inches long, so it's, you know, like a good 20% or so, 20-something percent longer. And it is wider also, uh, and I'm sure heavier. But as far as power density, um, <laughs> the Bosch wins out. And this battery is made by Tianjin Shanzhong New Energy Technology Company Limited. Sweet. <laughs> and, uh... There's the specs on that guy. Oh, and the label says right there, 281 watt hours. Sweet. So I'm gonna turn this bad boy on for its first charge. It does say, turn on the battery switch when charging. So here we go. First time, it's gonna power up. There we go. Okay, so it showed up with, uh, let me turn this light off here. See, that looks like one quarter charge 
which is to be expected because they're shipping this thing. And here we go. Plug in with one hand. Now, as far as battery charging, one little hack I learned from EMTV's uh, YouTube channel is you can actually use like a um, electric socket timer to turn off your battery charge after the uh, suggested four hours there to fully charge your battery. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set a little like kitchen timer type deal that cuts off the power after four hours to the charger. And that way, stay safe and not have to worry about setting a fire in your garage. All right, guys, I got something bad to report on the Hyper. And it's these handlebars. They're 620 millimeters. Come on now, guys. Hyper, what are you doing? This is a 29er mountain bike. People who are riding a 29er, six foot and up on the trail, they want handlebars that are like, what, like 680 at least wide. Probably more like in the 700s, maybe even 800. What are you doing with 620? Get out of here. This isn't a fixie. All right, guys, so here's another side-by-side -side of the Hyper and the Cube, the frame construction. Uh, the Cube is actually carbon fiber frame, so you know you can't really compare those materials-wise, but as far as just the beefiness and the uh, structural size of the frames, the Hyper is definitely, uh, again, like the battery, like I would say like 20% more narrow 20% less beefy, um, but I like that. Like I said, if I'm running to the taco shop, I kind of feel ridiculous rolling up on a $6,000 bike. <laughs> the $600 is uh, good enough, as long as it doesn't crack on me. That's the big question, but like I said, I'm, I'm not taking jumps. I'm not going on blacks. Probably not even blue blacks. Just sticking to greens and blues. So this frame ought to be fine. All right, so I got the front wheel on. Um, what I basically did was this screw, which one is it? Here, on the, uh, where my finger's pointing, on the inside of the brake caliper, I had to loosen that bolt a little bit to even get the rotor in. And uh, so I loosened it all the way, got the rotor in, tightened it all the way, the rotor wouldn't move. Loosened it in half turn increments until I got it sounding like this. And you can kind of hear, if you listen, the pads rubbing against the rotor. And the rotor's not perfectly true now that I was messing with it for so long. But um, I got it in there and uh, that rubbing noise from the outside pad, that should get better as I, as I use the brakes and the uh, pad gets worn down a little bit. All right guys, so it took me a couple hours to build the bike. Uh, Jean-Claude <laughs> was watching me and um, Got a couple initial thoughts. The uh, brakes are pretty rubbish. They're rubbing. Uh, I guess maybe they need to be broken in or something. But um, yeah, it kind of sucked the front caliper because the the space was so narrow out of the box while assembling it. Uh, I had a really hard time getting the rotor in there and that took me uh, maybe like 10 minutes to figure out. But I got it in there. Um, brakes don't have much stopping power. Um, it, the wheels don't even lock up if I'm just pushing the bike in either direction. So I have like very little confidence in these brakes. Uh, drivetrain is rubbish, but we kind of knew that. I mean, that's not what you're buying for this bike. I mean, look how little those gears are. And this is a one by, so mountain bikers are laughing at that drivetrain. But, you know, if you're not going on any hills, I guess, you know, it's probably geared correctly. Uh, the handlebars are rubbish. Those definitely need to be replaced. Um, but, you know, I can I can ride a green trail tomorrow. Um, the front fork, it probably has like 60 mil travel, is what I'm guessing. It's like a pogo stick, no adjustments. It's not an air fork. It's heavy, it's steel. Um, so one question I have actually about these rear hub motor e-bikes is, are they gonna be, is this one specifically, gonna be balanced 50-50 or close to it? That's important because if you're going up and down a trail, trail as Jean-Claude knows, you don't want a whole bunch of weight over the rear wheel when you're climbing because that's gonna have you loop out and do a wheelie and maybe fly off the back of your bike. So, um, you know, on that guy, uh, I'm able to climb super steep hills, like hills you can barely walk up. So. I would love to do that on this bike with the assistance of an electric motor, but I don't think that's going to happen. 
What do you think, Mochi? Is it any good? What do you think of the frame and the battery and the motor? Does it look like it's worth keeping for 600 bucks? All right, pop quiz. What's the one feature this bike has that my $6,000 cube stereo hybrid doesn't? Have you gotten it? Have you gotten it yet? That's right, a kickstand. You know, this bike reminds me a lot of the Wavestorm soft top surfboards you get at Costco. <clears throat> the old guard kind of hates on them. And they're not the best, but they're a slamming deal, first of all. And for someone who's just starting, if it gets them out there, it makes the sport more accessible and it's good in that regard. Just remember, at the end of the day, it's the person who's having the most fun who's winning. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I know I kind of ramble on and the video ended up being a little longer than I originally thought, but appreciate your attention if you watched this whole thing. And um, Jean-Claude and I both are asking you to please like and subscribe so that if you want to get more updates on the Hyper E-Ride 29 or on the trail. Peace out. Okay, come on, boy. Come on, let's go.